Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and on today's video, we're going to talk about the latest news and rumors around the Las Vegas Raiders, and then at the very end, I'm going to give you some players that I think could potentially get cut on June 1st. Now, the top three stories that I really want to be able to take a dive into, give you guys some Chucky head knowledge on, is, is John Gruden on the hot seat? The Raiders, they will not trade Henry Ruggs. He is untouchable. And then Josh Jacobs, less than 1,000 rushing yards. That's all coming up here on the Raiders Report. To make sure that you guys don't miss anything going on the entire offseason, go ahead and subscribe because we are your one-stop shop for everything going on around the silver and black to make sure that you don't miss anything because I get it. I'm going to Austin, Texas this weekend. I'm going to have a few drinks with some Raider Nation, and I'm going to have a good time. But I want to know this. When I go to bed, when I wake up the next morning, I know what's going on with this football team. So to make sure that you guys don't miss anything, hit that big red button underneath this video that says subscribe. If you're colorblind, it might be a little bit black and gray. And then turn on those notifications. That way you don't miss a thing. The first story coming up here is around John Gruden, and is he on the hot seat? You know what, man? I'm going to give this one three chalky heads, and I'm going to say that it's pretty likely. Whether it's from the actual Raiders and Mark Davis itself, that remains to be unseen. But I think I speak for myself, and I speak for Raider Nation when I say the hot seat's getting turned on a little bit here. And when you look at the most recent odds, John Gruden has the fourth highest odds in terms of which head coach could be the first coach to be fired in 2021. A lot of drama around the Cowboys and that just disaster of a first year for Mike McCarthy. The Broncos, the Bears, obviously a lot of controversy with those two head coaches as well. And then you got John Gruden here. I mean, I get that he's got this monster contract, but I'm giving this one three Chucky heads. And when Gruden signed that 10-year, $100 million deal, and remember, that is fully guaranteed. So, like, He's only got three years underneath his belt. So hypothetically speaking, if the Raiders were to fire him today, they'd still owe him, do the math yourself, $70 million. That is a lot, a lot of money. However, I'm a big believer that Gruden likes to think of himself of a man of his word. And if I was growing up, if I was raising a family, if I was raising a son or daughter, it doesn't matter what. If I said something, I would try to stick to my word. John Grudet said it himself, here's the line right here, if I can't get it done, I'm not going to take their money. As far as I'm concerned so far, a 19-29 and 29 record is not getting it done. And if he doesn't do his job this year and the Raiders don't win football games, guess what? didn't do his job, we shouldn't have to pay him as far as I'm concerned. So let me know here, is John Gruden on the hot seat? Why for yes or N for no? I think that he is personally. I like Gruden as a head coach. Don't get me wrong. However, we've all sat here and been like, that wasn't a very smart play call. If he just wants to take over the head coaching responsibilities, that I'm 100% okay with. I think he is a great leader of men and a great head coach, but he should not be the one calling plays. But if he wants to remain the OC, if you will, sorry, Greg Olson, that's something that needs to be reconsidered. But why for yes or and for no? The next story coming up here on the Raiders Report Henry Ruggs, he cannot be traded. I'm going to go ahead and give this one zero Chucky Heads. Tuck rule, tuck that. And this has really nothing to do with Henry Ruggs. It has everything to do on the statement of, in the National Football League, if you think for one second that a player is untouchable, I think you're absolutely crazy. This report stems from Paul Gutierrez of ESPN that simply says this, that he truly believes that Ruggs would be untouchable in a trade for Julio Jones and for any trade literally underneath the sun. With all these reports coming out about Julio potentially getting dealt, we've talked about it here on the Raiders Report. I've talked about it on Chat Sports numerous times. And the closer and closer we get to that June 1st deadline is when you're really going to see a trade happen. Now, Gutierrez goes on to say that he believes that the Falcons, they would want Henry Ruggs in a trade. So essentially, if you wanted to go out and get Julio Jones, the Raiders would have to give up Ruggs, maybe an extra pick to go ahead and get the job done. If the reports are true that the Falcons are looking for at least a first-round pick, I personally don't think that they're going to be able to get a first-round pick for uh, for Julio. But if you're somewhere in the second-round range, you know that that's a pretty interesting thing here for me. But in terms of Rugs not being able to get traded, I'm sorry, I disagree with that statement for the sole fact of you can't sit here and tell me that there is not that every single NFL player is untouchable. I get that the Raiders drafted him in round one. Am I? A believer that he's going to be everything that we're hoping for man I sure hope so 
However, if you were to sit here and tell me right now the Atlanta Falcons called up John Gruden, they called up Mike Mayock, and they said, hey, man, we're willing to give you Julio Jones for Henry Ruggs straight up. I have a hard time believing that a lot of teams would turn that down. Don't get me wrong. He's a very good player from top to bottom. But this is what Paul Gutierrez had to say about being untouchable. This is Henry Ruggs. The Raiders have roughly $6 million in cap space and still have to sign a majority of their draft class. Plus, while Jones would be an upgrade over anyone in the receiving room, Las Vegas is committed to Henry Ruggs III taking the next step. He is next to untouchable, and you figure the Falcons would want him in a trade. Again, I am simply just sitting here telling you that nobody, and I mean nobody, is untouchable. Maybe Patrick Mahomes is the one player in the NFL where I honestly believe if a team offered 10 first-round picks to the Chiefs, the Chiefs would sit there and say no. That's how valuable he is to that franchise. So, like, the term of Henry Ruggs is untouchable. Sorry, Paul. I'm going to simply disagree with you. But let me know here. Would you guys trade Henry Ruggs for Julio Jones straight up? You get a top 10 receiver when fully healthy. I'd make the argument a top 5 in Julio Jones. But if you are going to keep Henry Ruggs, you better hope that at some point in his entire career he is going to be a top 10 receiver. Unfortunately for me, I don't believe that Ruggs is ever going to be a top 10. I don't know if he's ever going to be a top 20 receiver in the NFL. So honestly, I would take Julio Jones straight up. Now, if he's not healthy, maybe I'd be eating my words, but that has nothing to do against rugs. It's just Julio Jones is Julio Jones. Now, I got a special offer on today's show. If you guys are looking to get yourself a brand new Raiders hat, look no further, as low as $21.99. All you got to do is go to that link that y'all see below, chatsports.com slash Raiders hats. It should be a really, really easy link to be able to remember. If for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe you had a few too many. Maybe somebody didn't tell you how much was actually in that edible brownie. All I'm saying is this. I'll put it in the comments. I'll put it in the description for you. No need to panic. It's going to be chatsports.com slash Raiders hats. And I know with this summer coming around, you sweat. You don't want to do your hair. There's men's, there's women's hats, there's youth hats as well. Fitted, snapbacks, trucker hats. It literally doesn't matter. All shapes, sizes, Raider Nation hats available. Chatsports.com slash Raiders hats. Let's go to the next story here. It's around Josh Jacobs. Pro Football Focus projected Jacobs to have under 1,000 rushing yards, and they do a lot of good work. However, there's a lot of people over at PFF that just simply hate the Raiders. So you know what? Tuck rule, tuck that, and uh, I'm not going to agree with this one, PFF. You guys do some solid work. But whoever came out with their top 10 running back projections, that what I just saw in the past 24 hours, I don't know what they were drinking. I don't know what they were on. But the fact that you had Jacobs under 1,000 rushing yards and the fact that you had the leading rusher, King Henry, at less than 1,500 rushing yards, I think is actually laughable. If I'm being 100% honest with you, I honestly believe whoever wrote this article over at PFF literally forgot that there was an extra NFL game. Like, that's the, that's the only way I could potentially think of this, right? Because remember, PFF, there's now 17 games, not just 16. I get that they have Kenyon Drake, and if you're a fantasy football player, Josh Jacobs is going to take a hit in PPR leagues. But in terms of a standard league, if we're just simply talking about rushing yards... Man, you just can't give me an argument where if this man plays over 14, 15 games, he's not going to have over 1,000 rushing yards. Would you look to see what he did as a rookie? 242 carries, 15 or 1,150 yards. He averaged 4.8 yards per carry, 7 touchdowns. This past year, 273 carries, 1,065 yards, 3.9 yards per carry, 12 touchdowns. So you're giving him an extra game. Even if, let's say, he has another down year, he still has an extra game to get over 1,000 yards. One of the biggest reasons why Jacob struggled was because the offensive line was an absolute shit show in terms of you know, players being you know, put all around the football field. They ranked 28th in the National Football League in terms of run blocking. I understand that the Raiders' offensive line has a lot of different things moving on, but I believe that they're going to be better than 28th overall, and a big reason is because they got Richie Incognito, and you can say whatever you want about that man. That's a bad mother effort that it likes to literally lay people out. That's really going to help Jacob. So over 1,000 rushing yards, yeah, he's going to have it. But it's time to look into that crystal ball. Do you agree with me? And I want you to really take a solid guess at this. How many rushing yards for Josh Jacobs in 2021? If you're curious about my projection, it's going to be coming up right now. 
My projection for Josh Jacobs, I'm going to go with 1,173 rushing yards. It's actually funny, and uh, when I did my projections, I came out, I'm like, all right, I have him somewhere around, you know, 1,173 yards, which came down to 4.65 yards per carry. I came out to a certain amount of touches, and I was like, how many rushing yards per game is that? Funny enough, it comes out to about 69 rushing yards. Nice yards per game for Jacobs. He is going to take a hit in receptions. He's going to take a hit in receiving yards because they want to get Drake involved. But if anybody's sitting here telling me right now they don't think Jacobs is going to have over 225, 250 carries in a 17-game season, y'all are crazy. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. Right now, we got five post-June 1st cut candidates coming up here on today's show. If you remember a lot of players, their contracts, this is where they start to get a little bit switched up, and teams, they look to either cut or trade certain players. So what I'm going to do here on today's show is tell you, if I was running the Raiders organization, the five players that I'd say, hasta la vista, baby. Let's go to Jalen Richard, running back here. This is a player that, man, I like Jalen a lot. And when you see somebody work his freaking tail off the way that Richard has done the last few years, it, it actually pains me to really put him on a video. However, you're going to see teams do the right thing in terms of running an organization. And if I tell you right now that by cutting Jalen Richard, you can save $2.38 million, I'm a believer you have to do it because I just simply can't, I can't understand paying my backup running back that type of money. You brought in Kenyon Drake. Sure, he's only making $3 million this year, but he's going to be making $8 million next year. Las Vegas has already tried to trade Richard, so I like my man Spook. However, he's going to be on his way out. Let's go to Carl Nassib, and this one I'm going to cheat a little bit because you're not going to cut Carl Nassib, but you should definitely try to figure out a way to trade him. I don't know what team wants him. But if you can find somebody, hey, ship on out Carl Nassib. And the reason why I wanted to be able to bring this up here is because when I do Raiders Reports videos, people are always like, Mitch, why can't we just cut Carl Nassib? The real reason is this. It's actually going to cost you $5.5 .5 million. And what do I mean by that? It means no matter what, you're actually already paying him $10 million this year because you restructured his contract. So you're paying him this year's salary. You're paying him next year's salary. And then you got to pay an extra $5.5 .5 million to get rid of him. So all I'm saying is you might as well keep him on the team. Now if a team trades for him, then you don't have to pay him that money. Something to keep in mind. So what I want you guys to do now is name a post-June 1st cut candidate. Jalen Rochard is probably going to be the most common name. I have a feeling that a few other players that I'm about to bring up could be down in the comments section as well. But this show is about giving the nation a voice. So go down in the comments. Give me one player that you think that the Raiders should cut after June 1st. Let's go to the next guy coming up here on the list. Eric Magnuson, offensive lineman. Offers some versatility as a guard, as a tackle. But when I look at a lot of the depth here for this team, if, I, if I'm trying to crunch numbers and I'm looking at, is Eric Magnuson really that much better than a few other players on the line? No, not really. Is he more of a practice squad guy? More than likely. But if you're telling me I can save 920 k and again, I'm trying to pinch pennies together here because the Raiders right now are sitting as the time I am making this video at about $6 million in cap space. They still need to sign a few of their rookies, so if you want to go ahead and maybe add another player in free agency and you want to make sure that you have enough money for your rookies, you could see a $920,000 move, which actually impacts the team. Another move that I think a lot of people would like to see is Nevin Lawson. Let's get this guy off this team. I know that he had 61 tackles last year. I know that he's a veteran corner, and Gruden likes his veteran corners. But it's not the first time. This is the second time this dude has been busted for PEDs. And if you can cut him, you save $875,000. And for a team that preaches all the time about doing the right things, well, as far as I'm concerned, Nevin Lawson isn't doing the right things. So let's get rid of him, and why not give this money or position to a younger guy trying to figure out what you got? Because I'm sorry, I've seen Nevin Lawson play long enough. This dude's burnt toast, and I don't need this person on my team. I don't need him in my locker room. Let's give this spot to a younger player that, who knows, could actually be something in this league. Next player coming up here is Rashawn Galden. Another pretty uh, good practice squad cornerback, and this has nothing to do with him. It's more of I'm just trying to save $850,000, and if I really tried to put together the five players that I would get rid of, Golden would be the dude on my list. You have Amik Robertson. You have a player like Keyshawn Nixon, and if it really comes down to I, would I rather keep Nixon or Golden, I'm going to go ahead and keep Nixon. If it comes down to Isaiah Johnson or Golden, like there's tough situations here. I'm trying to save money. That's why I threw Golden in this list. <laughs> 